Hi chess friends, today I'm going to show you two games, one little blitz game of mine and a more serious game of grandmasters showing you the old way to play the birds opening. Um, with F4 when it uh, was fashionable back in the old days the intention was to play e3 here and the queenside fear and cattle to control the center on the dark squares with the uh, with the bishop and with the knight here so you see and the most important square for white is e5 this is important for the attack later on and this setup is very good for a kingside attack and I will show you th one example in this little blitz game here and um, this is a game I played I played bishop b2 here and uh, knight c3 well you can play the bird in many ways you can play um, d3 and knight d2 controlling the e4 square so that there um, is no possibility for black to occupy that square and the bishop is free then and not blocked but um, knight c3 is possible and you will see why and how I use this knight e6 and bishop d3 this is possible of course you can play bishop e2 as well but this is a more active location and I wanna uh, attack black's king side here bishop c5 is black's move and I don't like this move if you have this pawn chain here then it's a good idea to move this bishop here and fill all the dark squares here okay let me get rid of these arrows to fill these dark squares and the bishop here in the middle is less vulnerable and you want in the end to push your pawns as black to get a freeing break for example e5 or c5 and maybe later on c4 and the bishop is in the way of that c pawn here and well I don't see what it is doing in my setup in this position what is it doing here actually okay knight e2 now so I'm rerouting this knight and the idea is to go here and to support a later f5 push this knight also controls um, the e4 square so again the e4 square is controlled so there isn't a possibility for black to occupy it then castles and knight g3 of course the best way um, to put your knight here if possible is of course to play um, g4 and the knight uh, comes behind that pawn and that's very um, helpful for breakthroughs against the black king but of course this is not possible here so knight g3 pushing f5 is enough a6 again a waste of time black should be moving um, their queen or rook to the open file here try to make use of my uh, king in the middle maybe I would be forced to castle short then I want to castle long if possible because I have my bishops against the enemy king and I wanna push f5 I wanna mount my knights on the king's side somehow and uh, this, this is why I want my king on the queen side again a6 uh, waste of time queen e2 now b5 
and now you see this bishop is in the way you want to break through with this pawn because it's the uh, most supported square here c4 from the black's perspective strong support but no action there this is a waste of moves um, also my bishop <coughs> excuse me would be vulnerable there okay I castle short the uh, long sorry and um, well you might think black advance their pawns already but I think my attack is quicker knight b6 was played here again further control of c4 a4 with this move but this is just a waste of time in blitz you don't uh, want to think in the opening you want to know so you have to play a setup where you know where you have to put the pieces so you can think afterwards instead of knight b6 queen e7 for example trying to exchange uh, bishops um, then push that pawn here that would be a plan in my mind in my opinion okay knight b6 and now a typical move knight e5 this is the most important square on the board f5 is important too if you have pushed this pawn uh, you want to push it down the board to attack the king in open lines. Also, this move gains a tempo on this pawn here. This forces bishop b7 almost. Well, where does it the bishop go else than there? Um, the bishop in at the moment is a useless piece here and it's kind of in the way against um, well it's in the way of black's plans because it's blocking one possible rook file if you have a fianchetto bishop mostly the attack on that side is a little bit slower because you have to remove that piece here f5 of course i have to get started now with my attack a5 and now there are many moves for example pawn takes pawn and now we can mount our knight on this beautiful square g6 which gains a tempo for example knight um, knight g6 and rook e8 and then knight h5 you see how much pressure there is on this knight if we if black doesn't do anything against it we just take it and soften uh, soften the pawn change the chain on the king side so black has to do something here and white surely has the upper hand in this position let's go back another move is knight h5 immediately um, I mean, we are again forcing to um, threatening to take, and if queen takes to not un, uh, to not uh, double these pawns, then there are all sorts of uh, evil threats. Uh, say, um, let's make a random move here, and say, of of course, now we could take that pawn, but this is not the theme now theme would be to take here and if the queen takes knight d7 and you see this attack now going at the same time we're attacking the rook the bishop now which is unprotected so knight h5 is a very strong move as as well what i played was knight g4 this opens the fire against uh, the knight in another way in contribution with the bishop here and I want to force black to take this knight and to pull my queen 
with a gain of time to the king's side and yes um, you're exchanging your pieces which are defending the king's side here and uh, this is a good idea because all my pieces are at on the king's side and the only light piece which defends it uh, should be exchanged. This is a good plan. A4 and now this is a winning position for white already. I took this knight but I didn't do it with knight takes knight. I played bishop takes knight to force um, to force of course uh, the same thing what would happen if I would have taken with a knight but now I can take on h6 with check king goes here well if uh, king here it doesn't make a big difference king h7 queen h5 and now there are discoveries here threatened gaining the queen you see the pawn taking here uh, opens fire against the king this way he played pawn takes pawn and I was quicker there are many ways I mean check for example and if king g8 che uh, checkmate here but I played pawn takes discovered check and check and now I had a little fun here with knight f5 check and queen h8 checkmate so again quick recap I play the queen fianchetto um, set up here if I want to play the old birds opening and I play bishop d3 let's just drop back this bishop is often a problem piece because you don't know what to do with it all the time um, well you have to hope sometimes to that a, that a plan appears by itself later on so bishop e3 looks active and this is why I play this to just wait but if black would have played something else like c5 sorry <laughs> c5 then you can immediately think about playing bishop b5 check forcing the exchange of the bishop and then you can go on with your setup b3 bishop b2 and so on and then you get rid of this um, sometimes problem piece okay you will see an example of the of this uh, in the next game just a quick recap I'm rerouting this knight to support the f5 push casting long here again I know black is slow with this with this position of the bishop it's just too slow knight e5 just a random move but it's correct and it's strong and I don't have to think I know it so this is why I play this setup I don't have to think In blitz I wanna play what I know and have fun I just wanna have fun you can think in the long games knight g4 and now the nice picturesque defeat of black with this discovered check okay let's look at a real game <laughs> and this game is from uh, 1910 Saviele Tartakova plays white and black is played by Rudolf Spielmann. Tatakova opens with our old bird setup. Um, you see, after c5, now you can play uh, bishop b5 check and exchange this piece if you want to. After knight c6, well, uh, Tatakova waited for this knight to appear there and only then play bishop b5 I guess this just strengthens the control of these squares because this knight is attacking 
those squares. And this is a good positional idea. Bishop d7 castles short here. Bishop d6. Why do I show you this second game? The second game I show you because in this game black uh, castles long. And now we, we want to see uh, how white might handle such positions with opposite uh, side um, castling positions when black doesn't run into white's kingside attack. Queen c7, queen e2 supporting a possible e4 push, of course not now, the pawn is under pressure here. <coughs> and now castles long. Knight b d2. You see, I played knight c3 with the idea to maybe reroute it here. This isn't forced. And this way around, um, of course, you have the option to push c4, open this file maybe, for a rook. So this is why in this position knight d2 is, of course, preferable. And Tartakova waited. Uh, with this knight to move it because he just waited to uh, black uh, waited for black committing his plans, revealing his hand where to castle first. A six, and now the bishop takes, and G three here. Well, this is a move I know the computers wouldn't like a pawn move. Um, there are certainly moves which have a function, uh, have a have a, a reason as well without moving that pawn. But it it's okay. I mean, this is human chess. Knight e8 here. Why knight e8? I mean, it's possible to play um, h5. But I think Spielmann was afraid of e4, and if takes, takes, then white is threatening this fork, and of course e5 by black doesn't work, uh, the uh, square is overprotected. So you see, this loses a piece. So I think this is why Spielmann played knight e8 to get out of this mm, forced gain of time by white. And now c4. This is just about uh, time to break open um, the center and open files against the enemy king. f6. Well. I guess it prepares something like g5 at the right moment, and controls the square e5 so that there is no knight supporting any uh, attack against the king. Pawn takes pawn. And now e4. So, I mean, black has the bishop pair. <coughs> Excuse me, but the problem is there are th three pieces on the C file, and white is very quick here. D4 and B4. Moves like B4, this is what I really love in chess. These are pawn moves with a reasoning, and you don't reason here with, oh my god, I'm losing a pawn. No, now it's about attack, 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 and this is absolutely the best move in the position. Of course, if uh, black takes this, we just have a rook coming to c1, and this is just very uncomfortable. Let's look at it. Takes, and now you see um, white is threatening to take this weakened central pawn and increase his attack, say, queen here. I mean, we can play knight c4 every time we want to. We can take this pawn. It's just a lost position. So instead, 
Spearman played g5 here and now pawn takes c5 gaining a tempo on the bishop bishop takes <coughs> and uh, I mean you can play you can play um, rook here but I think Tartakova didn't like his g file to be opened against the king so he took on g5 and rook g8 rook ac1 bishop drops back knight b3 and now you see this pawn is sooner or later a goner also knight c5 to e6 is threatened um, yeah this just doesn't look fine knight g7 knight c5 bishop takes I mean the bishop at the moment has no job at all as long as it's staring at this uh, pawn here rook takes knight e6 rook c4 pawn takes rook fc1 now who's quicker I guess we can all see this queen b6 getting out of the rooks file knight e5 again a typical move and you don't have to think a lot to find this move in Bird's opening and now after takes pawn takes and check king d7 and now Tatokova found a very nice um, forcing move here rook takes e6 king takes check check queen e6 a very strong centralization and um, I mean white is threatening checkmate in one so rook gf8 and now a very nice blow um, the best move in this position if you want to find it pause the video if you like and the move is bishop takes d4 check you see all the squares are under control so black has to take well if he doesn't want to surrender his queen first or lose this way so takes queen e7 check king g6 queen takes and again check and checkmate is threatened here and in this position Spielman resigned to Tar Tartakova here I hope I'm right just let's let me look at the game again yes that's it so I hope you like the games I've shown you they're just um, to show you how to play here in this position of course a typical idea to exchange off that bishop after the pawn lands on c5 this is easy for white and now queen e2 another key move this is a key move this is a key move and the knight in this position probably comes to d2 here the knight on d2 can support a knight here and then you have two knights so these are the ideas of this opening and this is really easy to play you don't have to think a lot you just have to look when to break open lines and then you just play by principle open lines 
activate your pieces, um, put pressure on your opponent. And there's nothing difficult in this game. This is really easy chess, straightforward chess here. Yeah. And with this blow, white forced black into a mating net here with this nice combination and won the game. Okay, please let me know what you think about the bird, what you, what you prefer. Do you like the modern bird with the um, kingside fianchetto here and the p pawns like this? Or do you like the old bird more? Um, if you play the old bird, it's really easy to play if uh, black is castling kingside. When black is castling um, queenside, you have to think a little bit more. Well, please tell me your thoughts. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye.